Hello. We've been talking about injury and fatality data and how safety managers may use those injury and fatality data. More specifically, one of the topics we talked about was the use of injury and fatality rates and how to calculate those rates. And this has already been covered in class. I just wanted to provide this video to you as a resource that you could use when you work on the practice problems. So let me just run through this very quickly, just a quick review, and then we'll go through the step-by-step -step procedure for calculating the injury rate and the fatality rate. When we're dealing with injury and fatality data, there are basically two types of data. There's count data, which are just the numbers. It's the count of how many incidents occurred within a certain geographic region or within a certain company. For example, Oklahoma had 91 fatalities in 2018. And everything we do in here is work-related. We're just talking about work-related injuries, work-related fatalities. Yeah, Oklahoma had 91 in 2018. That's the raw count. That's the raw data. That's the count data. And that's useful. You can, you can use that information as a safety manager. But rates are even more useful. The rate controls for the population size or the size of the economy. You know, California is going to have a lot more fatalities than Wyoming, but California has a much lower rate when you control for the 30 million people that live in California and all of the, the size of California's economy. Um, Wyoming has a rate over 11, a fatality rate over 11, where California has a fatality rate under three. But again, if you just looked at the counts, it would be, it would be misleading. The rates are more useful. Again, it allows a comparison between different geographic regions organizations, uh, occupational groups, different industries. And these comparisons can come in handy for a safety manager. And back to Oklahoma's fatality count in 2018, there were 91. But when you control for the number of hours worked, the fatality rate for Oklahoma is 5.2, which kind of puts Oklahoma in the middle. As, as we've seen, we looked at the map of the United States and the different uh, fatality counts and rates for, for different states. Uh, give you a little bit more information about rates and how they are calculated. Uh, one thing I do need to mention, um, Oklahoma's rate is 5.2 fatalities for every 100,000 full-time equivalent workers. FTE equals full-time equivalent, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means on the next slide. Yeah, a little bit more information on rates. Rate is the number of events per some base population or some base unit. Injury rates, fatality rates, the base will usually be uh, full-time equivalent workers. The number of full-time equivalent workers. That could be 100, 10,000, 100,000, depending on the type of rate. Talk a little bit more about that in just a second. In 5.2 fatalities per 100,000 workers. Fatality rates at the national level are generally measured per 100,000 workers. 100,000 workers is the base, but we use hours worked data to calculate the rate. Again, don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay, calculating rates, we need the raw number of events. We need the count data. We need the total hours worked within the, the unit that we're focusing on. If it's a company, we need all the hours worked within that company. If it's a state, we need all the hours worked within that state. Once we have the count data and the hours worked, we'll multiply that by a base value. Again, 100 FTE is a common base value when you're talking about injury rates. And 100 FTE equals 200,000 work hours. You may also see, oh, just a second. you may also see 10,000 FTE. The, the number that's used in the formula, if you're calculating a rate per 10,000, 
full-time equivalent workers, you're going to use two million. Uh, 10,000 is used occasionally for some measures, but 100 and 100,000 are the most common that you'll see when you're using injury and fatality data. Uh, 100,000 FTE, the base value in your formula will be 200 million hours. 200 million hours equals uh, 100,000 full-time equivalent workers. Again, even though the rate is per 100,000 workers, hours work data are used in the calculations. 100,000 FTE workers equals 200 million hours. And this all goes back to, to uh, the number of hours worked by one full-time equivalent worker based upon a 50-week uh, work year and 40 hours per week one full-time equivalent worker one full-time one full-time equivalent worker is 2,000 hours per year and there are some assumptions made there are, they're assuming that workers only work 40 hours per week they assume that workers get vacation some workers don't get vacation some get more than two weeks but when you take all of the hour data from all the different companies companies have to submit their hours work data when you take all that hours work data and uh, compile it together then you can calculate um, the number of FTE workers based upon these definitions and this may be the most confusing thing about rates I think the best advice I can tell you when it comes to rates for uh, this class especially and even as you're working as a safety manager is always know the base value always know the base for the rate that you're using if it's injury rates it's usually going to be 100 FTE if it's fatality rates at the national level 100,000 full-time equivalent workers All right well let's go ahead and look at an example of calculating a fatality rate we'll do fatality rate first uh, in the table our Oklahoma fatality data for 2018 we uh, sourced this data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and with this data we can calculate the fatality rate 91 fatalities there were 3 billion 500 million hours worked in the state of Oklahoma uh, for 2018 and here's the formula we use and it, it's really simple all we're doing is division and multiplication to calculate the fatality rate in the numerator of the formula or the numerator in this term of the formula the number of work related fatalities in the denominator we have the number of hours worked in the state and again we're dealing with state level data so it's hours worked in the state now 200,000 or 200 million I mean sorry 200 million this is our base value that is the equivalent of 100,000 full-time equivalent workers that is 100,000 full-time equivalent workers and that's a constant when we're calculating fatalities uh, that's going to be your constant and again it, it's really simple just plug in the numbers and do the math we have 91 91 fatalities so we plug that in there we have 3 billion 500 million hours work we plug that in there Again, the constant is constant doesn't change now now we need to divide the numerator by the denominator 91 divided by 3 billion 500 million gives us a really small uh, number uh, but that's that's what you're going to run into you get used to using you know, a lot of decimal spaces or decimal places when you're doing these kinds of calculations because the nature of this calculation you end up with some really small uh, numbers that you're working with so the next you know, we have multiple iterations of the formula formula plug things in do the division now we want to do the multiplication we want to multiply this times this this times this we're going to multiply it so I'll put a little multiplication sign in there <clears throat> 
And again, I'm having some malfunctions with my pin. I apologize. Let me. Oh, there we go. Okay. When we multiply this number by this number, we end up with the rate, which that's what we're after, of 5.2 fatalities for every 100,000 full-time equivalent workers. Again, here's some more information about the whole concept of full-time equivalent workers. Again, 200,000 hours, 200 million hours worked, one FTE worker is 2,000 hours per year. Like I said before, most important thing when you're using rates is always know your base that you're working with. Without the base, the rates are meaningless. Again, for this particular example, our base is 100,000 full-time equivalent workers, but in our calculation, we're using 200 million to represent those full-time equivalent workers. And like I've already said, other bases are used uh, in different calculations. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and look at an injury rate calculation. Now, there's not data available for Oklahoma, or I would use Oklahoma. Oklahoma, I don't know what the disconnect is, but for the last several years, they haven't reported their injury data to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So I'm going to use the next best thing. We'll talk about Texas and their injuries. And these are only recordable injuries, which is a certain type of injury. It doesn't include first aid cases. It includes cases where... Uh, the worker had to go to a clinic or a medical uh, professional for treatment or they and or they missed work days because of the injury that those are two basic um, conditions that can cause an injury to be a recordable injury and we'll talk more about that later in the semester we'll, we'll get into the recordability of injuries later on but in Texas in 2018 there were 178,000 uh, recordable injuries and there were 17 billion 800 million hours worked. The formula is identical to the fatality rate formula except for the the uh, meaning of the variables and the base value that we're using. And this is going to be the rate per 100 full-time equivalent workers. So we're using 200,000 hours as our multiplier. In the numerator, we have number of recordable injuries, denominator, hours worked in the state. So write out your formula, plug in your numbers, 178,000, 17 billion, 800 million in the denominator. You end up with not such a small number this time, but it's still multiple decimal places. We multiply this times 200,000. And our injury rate per 100 full-time equivalent workers in Texas for 2018 is 2.0. For every 100 workers in Texas, we can expect two recordable injuries. And this is within a, a one year time span. Okay, and there's that information we've already seen on the previous slide. Again, that's pretty, pretty much it. We're going to revisit rates and the whole concept of rate and calculating rates later in the semester. But it's important to understand rate anytime you're dealing with injury and fatality data. Uh, you do have a, an assignment, some practice problems. Uh, where you will calculate the injury rate and the fatality rate. Uh, then once you complete those practice problems, there is a five question quiz uh, that you will complete. If you have any questions about these calculation procedures, let me know. Hopefully the video helps, gives you something that you can go back to when you are working on the uh, practice problems, uh, the worksheet that's provided. All right, have a good day, and I will see you in class.